Hey there, Spencer here, and today we're going to start a brand new series called Product of the Week. It's where we choose our favorite product that we've currently got available and showcase it. Today in episode one, we're going to be taking a look at a Pioneer dual cassette player. At first glance, this cassette player looks much like any ordinary cassette player. It is far from that. The left deck is capable of holding up to six tapes. That's insane. Let's get a close look at this beauty. The power button is located in the upper left corner. Below that is the deck one timer switch. If you set the switch to relay REC or record, the device will automatically begin recording from the line in when the device gets power. If you set it to play, it will automatically begin playing when it receives power. More on this function later. Below that is the cassette return button. This will return all tapes to the main tray. Then the eject button. If you press the eject button while a tape is playing, you can exchange five tapes while one continues to play. But make sure you don't accidentally put a tape in the slot that is playing. You can tell which one that is because the tray is missing. If you return all tapes, then press eject, all six tapes will eject. The phone's connection is for listening with headphones instead of a traditional speaker system. In the center area, the first thing you have is the relay button. If you press that, you will toggle the deck one relay function. When the screen reads relay, that means that the function is turned on. With it on, the tapes will play or record continuously one after the other. The three buttons next to that are the copy mode controls. The edit button will set the dubbing mode to record from deck one to deck two. Normal will set the mode for deck two to deck one dubbing at normal speed. The high speed button will set it to deck two to deck one dubbing in high speed. Then you have the deck two eject button. Below is the display screen. If you look closely, there are some useful indicators. One is the tape end indicator. With this, you could tell approximately how much more time is left on a tape. If the tape you are playing or recording has a normal hub, you will want to pay attention to the N hub line. The E indicates the end of the tape. If your tape has a large hub, you will want to look at the L hub line. In case you don't know the difference, the hub is the reel on the inside of the tape. This is a large hub and this is a normal hub. Each line indicator represents approximately two minutes. When the tape is approaching the end, the first indicator will begin blinking. After a few minutes, that indicator will shut off and the next indicator will begin blinking. It will do this until the tape ends. Below the screen is the cassette slot selector. To the right is the recording level knob. When setting this, you will want the decibel meter to go into the red every once in a while. To the left is the counter mode button. Use this to toggle the time display between the standard counter and minutes slash seconds. The reset button will set the counter to zero. Next are the Dolby noise reduction buttons. You can set it to off, B, or C. The memory button lets you preset every slot individually. If you aren't familiar with Dolby Noise Reduction, this is basically a filter for optimizing music during playback or recording. Then you have the Deck 1 playback controls. The first button is Rewind. You may notice the MS labeled above the button. MS stands for Music Search. If you use this button while a tape is playing, it will automatically rewind to the beginning of the current song. If you push it twice, it will rewind to the beginning of the previous track. You can press it multiple times and the screen will show you how many tracks it has to rewind. The count will go down as the tape rewinds. Then you have what looks like a backwards play button. This will play side B of the currently loaded tape. Then the stop button, side A play, and fast forward. 
The CD synchro button allows for easy recording from a CD player. The CD player has to be CD synchro compatible. Next is the recording mute button. If pressed during a recording, the deck will record a four second blank spot on the tape, then will enter recording standby mode. If you hold the button down, the blank spot will be created until you let go of the button. Blank spots are useful in cassette recording because that is how the tracks are split up. Blank spots are what the deck is looking for when searching for a new track. The pause button will pause recording or playback. The recording button is used to begin a recording. The reverse mode button is used to toggle between one-way mode and reverse mode. One-way mode will play or record just side A or side B and reverse mode will automatically play or record side A and side B. In reverse mode it will repeat the tape eight times before stopping. If relay mode is turned on it will stop after playing slot six. Off to the right, you have the deck 2 controls. On the rear panel, you have an input for recording and an output for playback. Then the CD deck synchro jack for connecting a compatible CD player. Next is the control in and out for controlling the deck from a compatible sound system and it was made in Japan, of course. Another fancy dancy addition to the system is the remote control. Most of the buttons on here are also on the front panel, but there are three additional buttons, All Rewind, Scan, and Random. All Rewind will rewind all tapes in deck one to the beginning. Scan will play the first 10 seconds of each tape. This is good for checking what you have loaded. Then we have the Random button. This is the best feature throughout the entire device. When random play is turned on, the 77 will randomly play music from deck one. Specifically, it will randomly select a tape, then randomly select a track from that tape. It will repeat this process after each track ends. It selects tracks by detecting blank spots on the tape. This is very impressive. Let's take the top off and see what's going on inside. I get a real kick out of watching this deck go to work. The way it swiftly and smoothly exchanges tapes is just amazing. Just look at it and listen to it. You can tell just from looking at it that the parts used are high quality. Shout out to Sony and Toshiba for helping out by providing chips. Let's check out the timer function real quick. Typically you would have this plugged into a timer which would be set to send power to the cassette player at a certain time. Let's set the switch to relay record turn on relay and auto reverse, then select tape one. Now if you turn the device off and back on, it will automatically begin recording from the line in source. It will record side A and B, then proceed to record all five other slots. The process ends after the deck records tape six. Even if you decided to start with tape four, it would still end on tape six. The same goes for if you've set the switch to play. That was an in-depth overview of our product of the week, the Pioneer CT-WM77R. 
I hope you enjoyed our first installment of Product of the Week, and I hope to see you again next week. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you check out our website to find some really cool vintage gear. Till next time, folks. See ya.